down the rabbit hole podcast. Oh my god, today took it took a while to start it off. How are you doing, mate? Yeah, good man. Uh, it's finished off watching uh, UFC 29. The Volk fight. How good was that? Go the Volk. Yes. Mate, he's a he's a beast. He's a <laughs> he's a tough little nugget, isn't he? Yeah. A tall guy looked a bit like Andrew Tate as well. All, of <laughs> Mate, all this guy kept saying was, doesn't doesn't Volk look like Andrew First Tate? First I thought Volk looked like Andrew Tate. And, and then like, all of a sudden... <laughs> but then I was like, actually, wait, that Mexico looks like Andrew Tate. So like, hey. In your world, everyone fucking looks like Andrew Tate, man. <laughs> Jesus Yeah, Christ. the song's just playing nonstop. <laughs> <laughs> what, how does the song go? Am I talking about a different song? Yeah. Anyway, let's get to it. We haven't shouted for a while. Yeah. I can't. I don't even know what episode. Maybe ten. I think we're in ten. Nine, nine. We're nine. nine. Oh, yeah. We haven't hit. Nearly, we haven't hit double digits. Nearly in the double digits. Holy we're getting, crap! We're, we're getting there. You know, for our seventieth subscriber, actually, we're more than that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll auction something off. I think. I think. Yeah, anyway, something. I don't know. One of these uh, Vader. One of these toys Vader, that Vader everyone toys makes that fun have been <laughs> getting <laughs> so much. Like, what do we hate? Why do we? Why do we hate Darth Vader? Anyway, yeah. let's get to it. Let's get to it. It's been a lot to talk about. There's been a lot to talk about. And let's start it off with this the submarine stuff. Mate, can you just fill me in? Because to be honest, I haven't been quite acute to the news cycle, but there are a lot of interesting little uh, nuggets in this one. So what, 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 what's happened? Yeah, so ba- basically, it's happened a couple of weeks ago now. Yeah. And like, there were these four or five really rich people who... Wanted to go on a sort of submarine trek of uh, the Titanic, and uh, you know, um, really. So the wreckage of the Titanic. Yeah, the wreckage. Yeah, how James. Yeah, you've probably seen documentaries yep, like yep. James Cameron going through, and you know, going his little submarine thing, yep. and like you know, going there and looking at it and stuff. But f- for some reason, they cheaped out on the <laughs> actual submarine itself and the tech. It was being uh, driven by a PlayStation 2 Logitech controller, which is... Are you playing games or what? <laughs> what, what, you, what so someone was controlling, controlling it. Controlling it with a PS2 controller, lo- a Logitech controller. And no, no, seriously, a P, uh, uh, like a PlayStation? Yeah, <laughs> it was the weirdest thing. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I mean, there's so many things just coming out of it. Like, obviously, they went down to some depths and then the, they, they're saying that the pressure crushed them. So, obviously, when you're down that, at that depth, you have to make sure the, the, the make of the sub... It's not even really a submarine. It's called something else, like a submergible or something. Yeah. It's so small, the area, like, where you can sit and stuff. It was five people. Mm. Um, and, yeah, literally, the, the the pressure of it was too much, and it just crushed, imploded. Um, really? Oh, yeah. Wait, okay, hold on. Let's just zoom back here. So, uh, this, is, this almost kind of, like, is reminiscent of, like, what Elon and some of the guys are trying to do in terms of commercializing, like, a trip to the moon. You're saying that... They allowed a trip to the Titanic via a submarine vessel, and they au- what they auctioned this out. Like, how, how did that even occur? Yeah, but like apparently, Mister Beast was even offered a ticket. That that I saw. Which yeah, uh, I don't know if that's true or not. But yeah. I mean, he doesn't really tell that many lies, Mister Beast. Oh, so. why would he lie, right? I'm not calling you out, by the way, Mr. Beast. So no one's calling anyone out on this episode yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> after last uh, time. <laughs> but um, yeah, uh, it's it's just. Yeah, it just feels weird. Like, it's $250,000 ticket. So, how many people were in? There were five, I believe. There were four adults and I think one teenager, maybe, you think. Teenager? Yeah, yeah. No one feels sorry for them because they're all rich. So, they're like, ah, oh, well, whatever. You can't not commit. <laughs> can't say that. Uh, but the memes. Have you seen the memes? Like, there's so many Man, memes. Man, I'm over society. Merely hours after this. Like, there were so many memes. I was like, whoa, this is... There was some weird stuff going on, but again, hold up. So five of them, two hundred and fifty a pop. Yeah, it can tour the wreckage of the Titanic, and they imploded. The, the, yeah, I mean, so like, how did it all happen? So it's the pressure, like I think, the, like the depths of those seas. For two hundred and fifty a pop, you didn't you didn't tell me that they pressure tested this. Probably not. I don't know. Well, they were using a PS2 on, controller, mate? so I don't know what was going on. So, what is going on? But, like, the scientists have sort of gone over it, and they're like, look, at that sort of... And there was, like, there's videos about, like, re- reconstructions of how it would have been, like, how yeah. it would have sort of imploded. Yeah. Um, and they were like, uh, you know, scientists were like, it's it was so quick that they wouldn't have even felt like being dead. Wait, like, so... It's like it happened like in deep, deep, apparently, deep. Apparently, implode. in twenty milliseconds is when obviously if something's happening to you, then you feel it. Yeah, it happened in like ten milliseconds. Really, it was so quick. So hold up, deep. Like, we'll, 
I still don't understand how they didn't QC this thing. Yeah, I know. Like, how uh, is that, how is that a thing? It's it's odd, especially for re- and then like I've heard. I mean, we're going to go into some into some theories oh, as well. <laughs> yeah, because they had um, a minor there as well. I I, I also heard a, th- a theory, conspiracy theory, by the way. <laughs> Shout out to Paul Haber. <laughs> Shout out to Paul Haber. Uh, I'm gonna get on. I'm gonna get cancelled. <laughs> um, but like I heard, um, it was maybe a life insurance job. From who? Yeah, like it's fake. It's in saying it that it's fake and. They, but these are like loaded people to begin with. Well, the, the thing is, a lot of rich people also owe a lot, you know that. Um, oh my! But gosh. like, yeah, they were. It was a, it's a sort of a fake death sort of situation. That's what I've heard, maybe. But it's. I don't believe this. Yeah, I mean, it. it hum, like at the end of the day, like whatever it is, I, I believe in human incompetence <laughs> being the reason, the, the main reason, the, the the most likely reason in these scenarios, and. Um, yeah, probably it most likely was human income. They, they didn't test it, they didn't QC test it, anyway, anything like that, I believe. Um, and the sad part of it is yeah. like, yeah, they died, but they didn't even get to see the Titanic as well. It was so far away, the wreckage of Wait, the, where they found it. Did they have a video feed for the whole thing? Surely they did. Surely they did. No, no. So that, that, that's uh, this, the weird this, thing, right? This, this like, doesn't, none, none of this adds up. You've seen James Cameron go down there with like videos exactly. and all this sort of stuff. And um, like, even like, isn't it like tethered to the to a ship above? Like, aren't they monitoring? That's why I don't understand. Like, what's, what was this? Like, it a just lot- seemed like a bunch of people just went there and just like, ah, oh, let's just go down, down there. Yeah. So I'm going to pay you 250K. I'm going to take my nephew. I mean, like, like a minor was, yeah. was involved. I'm not going to ask any questions about QC. By the way, there's not going to be any video feed link. Yeah, You're it's right. A no, it's no, a bit odd. Doesn't it sound a bit odd? No, like, no, it, none like, of this seems to just add up very well. It sounds a bit odd to me. Like, it just sounds very like something set up about it. And like we even got like the amount of news coverage it got was crazy. It, w- right? it was. It was. Um, I was overseas at the time and I was like, what is going on? Like, and I, had, I didn't have internet for a couple of days, like, mm. you know, properly. And I was like, what? I'm getting internet like in, in like, you know, like in, in an hour and like a bit, bit, bit here and there. But yeah. I was like, why is everyone talking about this submarine? I don't understand. Even like Barack Obama sort of talked about it. It's like, look, yeah, we've got this going on, yes, but then we've also got like refugee ships yeah, yeah, sinking. Yeah. Like, you know, there's there's much more. Like, I mean, obviously, it's very sad. Like, you know, yeah, it's people. tough. I mean, there's even a conspiracy theory. Oh, there's multitudes of it with this one, but that it was clogging the news feed that there were other things happening during that time. Again, just none of this adds up. I also saw a video in which James Cameron claimed that he knew well before time when they announced that uh, the search was over because they were. Yeah, presumed yeah, dead that he yeah. knew like I don't, I don't even know what's happening here it's odd it like is, the whole none, the whole thing screams of, of just, just something odd something really i don't know something planned it's not right me. right something like, doesn't feel right about the whole situation yeah like there was there's something at play here i don't know what, what do is. you think is going to happen when elon bloody who was the owner of amazon uh jeff bezos, bezos is these these bastards want to get us to the moon like a uh, ecotourism. You, who you think is going to take that first plane? It better be them themselves because no, <laughs> they know I'm not. Pay, you're paying me two hundred fifty k. Zuckerberg would love if Elon took that plane. <laughs> uh, all right, l- l- let's talk about this. See, listen, mate. It's my boys, my boys. So, what is this nonsense about Zuckerberg and Elon? Uh, is it an MMA fight? Is it jiu- I'm confused. Like, what are they doing? And why? Why? Why is this a thing? So what, what's I think, happening? I think it was something that the, the fans were just sort of bringing up, right? It's like, a, and then, and then I think Elon must have commented Wait, on up. it. Let's 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 zoom back a bit. So we we know that uh, Zuckerberg doing jujitsu is a thing. Yes, that's yes. Right, that's okay, yeah, so yeah, it's yeah. got a lot of yeah. press coverage. Press coverage. Mm. Woohoo, homeboy does. I mean, like a lot of. I do it myself, just just letting you know. But like a lot of a lot of people do recreational yeah, jujitsu yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. Okay, and then all of a sudden, it, it was on Twitter, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Did yeah. Uh, who challenged who though? No, I'm sure it was. It Elon. wasn't a challenge. It was something the fan brought up, I think. And then, and then Elon tweeted. Said, "Let's do it. it" or something like that. Said, oh yeah. yeah. And like then Zuckerberg yeah. was send location. <laughs> <laughs> and now. All we can hear about is th- these bastards are actually trained. Dude, we got Dana White involved. He he wants to be the what? one that is doing the He's promoting. Co- of, of course, this, he wants to promote. Be it. the biggest fight of the century. <laughs> you know what's you know what's the saddest thing? The saddest thing is these two fight, 
And if Dana promotes it, it's going to be the biggest pay-per-view of all time. <laughs> it will. It 100% will. <laughs> and you will have guys like Connor, Floyd, and like, what is going on? You know what's funny, right? Like, we just went to the pub and we were watching the Volk fight. Yeah. There's a lot of, like, yeah, big dudes there, yeah, tatted yeah. up dudes. <laughs> All, like, all the nerds, <laughs> all the software we, engineers, like fucking code in C plus plus. We go there for the Zuckerberg and Moss fight, man. man. It was a different crowd, man. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Like, and this just shows we are in the era of the celebrity fight, and I'm yeah. over it, man. Yeah. I'm over the celebrity fight shit. Well, it's just an extension of the YouTuber sort of fight scene, you know. Um, KSI, Logan Paul, all that sort of stuff. Um, I think it's just an extension. Why do okay? But it's definitely the biggest of those. Yeah, yeah hold on, hundred percent. So, and and again, that that it's just that celeb. When did businessmen become celebrities? Seriously, when when did they become so ingrained in pop culture that we even give a shit that the guy does jujitsu? It's fucking random, isn't it? Yeah, I mean that that's the thing, right? Like, it's. Everyone here is like, oh, this guy does recreational jujitsu. Like, yeah. oh, bro, I'm going to get him into a fight. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah, why? It's like, not everyone that does recreational jujitsu wants to get into like a big fight, you know, for promoted said, fight. He said location. <laughs> said location. He clearly does. Uh, was, yeah, Zuckerberg's a bit weird though. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, every, I think everyone would, it's weird though, because like Musk is equally unpopular, I would think. You reckon Zuckerberg's unpopular? Yeah, I, like to an extent, like everyone just, Gets creeped out by him by his vibe. Why? Because like, a bit like because he very, looks like an elf, eh? Or more like, <laughs> like an alien. Like. Come on! <laughs> oh. Everyone thinks he's a reptilian or something. Of an alien over here. <laughs> no, I'm just filled with conspiracies today, but oh my <laughs> gosh, I ain't stopping. But uh, no, it's like it's just got this weird vibe, and like I think, like you know, in the social network, he's sort of seen, in the movie, right? He's seen like a, yeah, like a bit of a. Uh, selfish sort of dude that you know just wants to get their ass kicked yeah um so that they both had that you know wanting to get their ass kicked sort of factor on but yeah but people feel like that for elon too yeah so that's the elon's thing got right elon's got, to be elon's got that too elon's got the, elon definitely has that i mean i don't know if they're opposite audiences but i think it might even be the same audience that wants to see them get there i mean it's just so they just want to see each other get beaten up it might even be good if it's a handicap match like them two versus some like ufc fight or something like that so wwe tag team yeah like handicap though handicap so like two of them two of them versus yeah, or th- a triple threat oh bro right fuck dana white like i'm, I'm the promoter <laughs> <You're> here. <laughs> <laughs> apparently and the thing is that this this narrative has just taken a, a whole like path of its own yeah um, they want to rent out the Coliseum to fight. Have you heard of that one? What is going on here? This is nuts, Brett. That would be sick. No, okay, no, no, I if, want it. I want no, it. So if if they go, I'll pay two hundred bucks for it. If they're going crazy with this, right? Go yeah. all out crazy. Go all out. Right? Go all out crazy. I reckon that's going to add to the the craziness of the whole thing. Yeah. Um, just do it. Just go out all out crazy. Just go all out. You know uh, what? Let Let's fight for the company. Put <laughs> Tesla on the line. Twitter, no, put Meta Twitter, on the Twitter line. Twitter versus Threads, mate. That's that's, that's oh, <laughs> gotta talk. Okay, so th- that's happened. So, Fe- a Meta, Meta has yeah. recently released their new social media platform. And I actually heard this before it got released. Uh, Zuckerberg was doing a podcast yeah. with uh, Lex Friedman, yeah. so he talked about he talked it. about it there. Yeah. He definitely talked about but it. Twitter, and um, sort of so this week. It got launched, and the question I've got to ask before we even get to the specifics is why? Why do we need another social media network? I thought we've all, I thought we've already discussed how bad these things are. Like, wh- why do we need another one? Tell so, me. Zuckerberg tried to purchase Twitter in two thousand eight, I believe. Really? And they rejected him. So, really? ever since then, I believe he's been cooking up like a, a Twitter alternative. Twitter yeah. Alternative, you know, like. And I, I think he's just been holding off on it for the longest time. Yeah. Right. Um, he's been holding off on it until the right time. And I believe, so right now there's like with Musk taking over Twitter. And I think a lot of the problems with Twitter were before Musk. He inherited a lot of that as well. That's correct. Um, uh, and yeah, it's just like, I he's think he waited, he waited until the, I guess people were like, oh, Tilda's getting kind of lame and, mm. um, yeah, there's all these competitors like Blue Sky, Mastodon, whatever. Yep. Um, that were not really taken off, to yep. be quite honest. Yep. Um, in the way that Twitter initially took off. Um, and he saw an opportunity there in, in the Instagram audience. 
So mm. that that's the crucial thing here, right? With through threads, right? Yeah. It links straight away with your um, Instagram, right? With your Instagram. So what happens if I don't have Instagram? Can't. You can still you can still really? create an account, but like, I think the linking to Instagram is its USP, because look at this, right? The social media is all about dopamine hits. Yep. You open up threads for the first time. And it tells you, do you want to connect to your Instagram? You can get all these followers. And then people who haven't, like, you know, started on, like, as soon as they start, then they'll, they'll follow you and you follow them. Well, you can import your followers. Yeah, yeah. Really? Um, yeah, yeah. And th- then uh, you, you start away. Mm. And if they're already on there, then you've got, like, and if they do the same thing as well, right? Mm. Which a lot of them have. Mm. Where, like, oh, you know, when this person joins, then I want to follow them. Yep. You can start. And you can have, imagine you have like 10,000 followers on Instagram. You mm. can start away with 10,000 followers. Yeah. If they're all on there. And that gives you that instant dopamine of hit course. That, yeah, that they're all searching for in social media. Well, like, if you can, yeah. Like, I'm starting off, I already have 10,000 followers. That's insane. Like, you know, I think, it usually takes time to build up like social media followers. It was, we all know, like, it takes a while. You have to work on it for every platform. Yeah. But to start off and it's already at that, you know, level. Yeah. Um, it's pretty good. And like, to be honest, like, yeah, how Twitter sort of become a cesspool for all this sort of crazy cesspool. political talk that just people get turned off by. Yep. Um, it's created a user that I think that like me, I just watch what goes on Twitter. I don't I rarely post. Yeah. I just it's like a news source for me. I just yeah, go yeah. through oh, okay, whatever. Well, whatever. Twi- yeah, Twitter is news, right? Like threads, and I'm seeing more threads, more people are feeling like they can just post. And I haven't seen anything really that uh, it's more fun. Like, you know, it just feels like it feels like what it, like the old forums used to feel like in a way, where it, it wasn't it, like that crazy sort of toxic sort of you know place where everyone's just going off at each other. It just felt like it's a bunch of fun. Like yeah, you know, we an, were just talking. Like, it's an interesting social I, experiment, right? Yeah, and I think also the fact that it links to your Instagram, mm. people behave differently on it. On Instagram on, or on Threads. It's because on the Instagram, like it's li- that's your profile, right? That's mm. like you know, um, you don't really see that much discourse on Instagram that you do on something like a Facebook or a Twitter. Yeah. And Twitter has had that problem, and Elon Musk has said it for a lot of time about like bots and shit like that. And, yeah, yeah. Um, all that sort of stuff, and I think Threads sort of fixes that problem. Mm. Like if it's linked to your Instagram, you do get less bots. Yeah. Right. But, like, it's also, yeah, like, I mean, it's, I, I think it's a smart move. By Zuck- and, like, what he's done with it, like, I mean, it might just be, like, because it's starting off, he's kept it very simple. Yeah. Um, that's on purpose. Twitter has a lot of these things, like spaces, all these other buttons. Or like, he's just kept it very simple. Um, people people are liking how simple it is. And that that's the same, uh, I guess, mindset he took with Facebook when he was competing with MySpace. Yeah. Just keep it simple. Yeah. Um, and that's what he's done is he's applied that same thing to threads. And, mate, it's like, what, what was it, 90 million users yeah, the last so time I checked? It's, it's pulled on pretty quick. And I think we've had social media for so long that, I, I mean, like, do you remember when you first got Facebook? I don't. Do you remember we, even when you got, we don't. So what I'm saying is now with this hyper awareness, it's interesting to see what people are talking about a first time got it. And, and you're seeing a lot of the first, I, I was going to say tweet. Yeah. It's an amazing thread. <laughs> thread, yeah. I don't know. If, it's going to take a while, though, that one to catch on. But uh, I'm here because Elon said, <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, what do I do here? Yeah. Asking for a friend. Like, y- you know what I mean? Because, like, if you think of, like, the uh, the major target market or, or age demographic for Instagram would be younger, right? Yes, And yes, Facebook yes. has moved to an older platform, right? Well, the, when's, yeah. the, when's the last time you actually said something like how you used Facebook when you first got it, yeah, where you would that, status, diarize your whole life the status went updates. out? But have you done that on Threads? I've done that. I haven't done that yet, but I've seen a lot of people do it. But so that's that's what you're saying, and yeah. and I wonder. Is, but I feel like I want to. So okay, that, but that's, why that's though? Difference. What's different about it? Like, what would you have you done that sort of dialogue or that sort of engagement? with Twitter when it first came out. And I'm wondering if that's the new shiny toy vibe or, it, or you're right. Be, because be. I actually saw an article, didn't read it, admittedly. And it was very stylized that threads would bring back microblogging. Does threads have, hold up, a um, word limit, character limit yet? I haven't checked that actually. I haven't, I haven't heard of it. I haven't so, so heard of Let's that. say yeah. theoretically it doesn't. Then yes, maybe it can. Yeah. Would I want to read something like that? I don't know. Hey, yeah. I, I don't know. But 
it, it'd be interesting because it has to differentiate itself a little bit. And the yeah. thing about Twitter is with a character limit, it did force you to tweet yeah, yeah, yeah. and get short and sharp. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, and that's, to be honest, where we're moving for. But I think there's that yearning for to move back into long content versus short content, yeah, right? Yeah. Oh, and what what is that parameter? But it's interesting and it's interesting. I, I can't remember when for brands uh, and a lot of brands, again... I have seen a lot of brands on. Yeah, of course. Threads. Yeah, of course. I've and, noticed. And that. it's because so this check this this out, right? So when I first heard of Threads, I did not know about the integration with that, right? Yeah. With Instagram. So what I wanted to do as a genius business idea is get all like names like Bit like <laughs> try and sell it like URL like in the <laughs> old day. And then when I realized, God damn Zuckerberg, you've already figured it out. Oh, yeah. Couldn't get it, but that's very smart. But like it's interesting, right? Because now so many people are hyper aware on what to do with social media networks. And you remember the time when Coca-Cola, when was the first time you started to see it being mainstream yeah. to have like social media platforms on a brand's page, like Twitter and Instagram, right? Yeah. I'd be intrigued to see how quick threads slaps on, right? Because it shouldn't be too long, to be honest. If you're a social media person, you'd be wanting to get on that bandwagon really quick. Yes, and I've seen a lot of companies come on, right? And one thing I'm seeing that's a bit different from Twitter at the moment, yeah. I don't believe there's an algorithm yet for it. I just I'm seeing everything. I don't. Uh, it's to not, be honest, I don't but, quite like that. But, but yes, yeah, I, I am seeing that's everything. That's the part too. I don't quite like, right? But it might even be because it's so new mm. that it doesn't have time, hasn't had time yet to sort of have its algorithm play yet. Mm. Um, get into like you know, get it into like you know, fully functioning algorithm. Um, but that's the difference I see at the moment. In, the, mm. in Twitter, like, Twitter's got its algorithm set pretty well in that, like, you know, if you've always looked at a certain subject, it will show more of those type of tweets, mm. um, discovery. Um, so that that might be something at the moment that Zuckerberg needs to figure out. But, I mean, they're early stages in their app. Only of like, course. Only launched, like, last week. Yeah. I- the irony is, theoriously, they should already have an algorithm if they've linked it to Instagram. Yeah, your, yeah. your interests don't yeah, change. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually think that that's happening because yeah. the, on my feed is like uh, things that uh, I haven't necessarily plussed and added, but I'm I'm getting it, oh, yeah. and it's showing yeah, yeah, it there. Yeah, yeah. So, and they yeah, they're all you, you, like they're stuff that I'd normally follow anyway. So they're they're definitely connected. It's linked that. to your Instagram, and it's linked definitely. to Facebook um, still as well. It's still like, like they, they, have, they have all of that, right? Yeah. So it's about that integrating that in a way that doesn't feel like oh shit, this how how are they getting all this? data but um but i wonder how these guys are making money with this they're not at the moment there's nothing ads it's an engagement nothing, play yeah, like engagement you can't play, yeah. straight away monetize it but yeah. it's it's going to be interesting and i think at the play now is there is a lot of discourse in twitter yeah so that's it that yeah. really is it for now right it's not about monetization and i think you're right in that if you can get people to engage ironically in the way that they used to engage in facebook in terms of writing their diary yeah, I str- yeah. i'm it you know, I'm in here enjoying this with my mate there. That's, you know, you that's know back what, in the ecosystem. You right? know where I saw this, uh, I guess, in its embryonic stage? Is I guess, you know when you used to go on Instagram and then you check your messages and then at the top you can see these little short messages like like a status or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like that is the embryonic stages of threads. Yeah. yeah. And that they've moved a lot of that oh, to yeah, there yeah. and then that's where you just say all that. Uh, Ironically, so a lot of people talk on Instagram messages, right? Yeah, as yeah, well. Right. Like yeah. It, it, it's an odd one, but uh, anyway, Elon versus Zuck. Yeah, it's all it's happening. Man. Zuck's Twitter. got one. <laughs> no, he struck like, first. He's smart. He's smart. He's smart. He he's, struck. He's, he's, he's first. struck first. But like, I mean, what Elon does with Twitter now? I mean, it is sink. It feels like a sinking ship. It hasn't completely sinked, obviously. But um, what's his move? I personally think Twitter is still the better interface. I mean, yeah. obviously, it's it's it, it, it's had there, but it's been there for a while. There's um, yeah, there's things that they've got to do. Um, we'll see. Competition's a good thing. Yeah, for probably, the consumer, yeah. competition is a good thing. But it, it is starting to also bring up like <laughs> the fact that like man, there's a lot of social media. There's a lot. Do there's we need a lot? Like, and- I, think think about it, right? For us, when we chop up this. We haven't. We're not even on Twitter engaging that much when we probably should be, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't need an additional social media. <laughs> no, it's so much. It's insane. It's a lot, man. So I almost feel like, and like content creators, like they're plus galore. Like, you reckon there's gonna be one guy in the future that just buys all of them and starts and does one what? social media? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I just think that monopolizes the whole cho- thing. Choice is always a good thing, right? But 
It is until it isn't, right? It's overwhelming, right? It is overwhelming. It, it really a does, lot, does get oh, overwhelming like, at the moment. We're, we're talking overwhelming. Imagine like a young person. Yeah. Like that's a lot. There's a lot of things now where you can really. It's all, but at the end of the day, it's all about data. You're giving yeah. them the data that they they're selling that data somewhere else. <laughs> that's big, really what it is, right? Big data, yeah. Uh, it's, it's, it's the business of data. It is. It is. All right. You know what? Enough of uh, Elon and Zuck. Something's giving me a headache. <laughs> Let's move to some sport. I heard that there was some controversy with the Crick Man. Usman, everywhere you go, bro. Like, I think you gotta, gotta chill down a little bit. What, 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 what's happening now? Oh, man. The, what's the, the run, out, army doing the run now? out heard around the world. <laughs> Keep talking. What, what's so, happening? So, there was an incident in uh, the previous test. So, right now, the third test is about to finish. Yeah. Um, the second test, uh, Johnny Bester from England was batting. Yeah. And, um, I can't remember who it might have been Cameron Green who was bowling and then um Alex Carey's the Australian wicket keeper, right? Mm. So uh, Cameron Green bowls the ball to bouncer um and it goes to the keeper. Um it's the last ball of the over, I believe. And I think um so you know during cricket we're like, you know, it's last ball over, good, okay, I'm gonna go to my partner, talk to him and you know, stuff down mm. the crease. Um Johnny Best like it goes behind him and then he's like, Okay, all right, I'm gonna go and talk to my partner. Mm. The Australian wicketkeeper decided to throw it to the stumps. Yep. So, usually what happens is um, the ball, you know, when once the wicketkeeper gets the ball, then that means the ball's dead. Okay. It's, yep. it's like, you know, then it's not in play anymore. Hmm. Like, you know, you can't do anything. You can't get anyone out anymore after that. But because of the the fact that the wicketkeeper just chucked it and then the batter, Bester, thought it was end of the over because I think he first... Must have seen the umpire take his first step walking away. Yeah. Indicating that the ball's dead. So then he started walking to his partner and then he and then he gets run out. Mm-hmm. And then Australians are appealing saying, That's out. Yeah. And then they like the umpire's like, wait, what? Um and then they think about it, like, actually, technically that is out. Yeah. So this caused a big, big sort of debate and real anger from the England fans that But technically um, it was out. Technically, it was out. Yeah, but this brings into the you know the whole thing, the whole debate about the spirit of cricket, right? Because we cricket is played in in a way like it's meant to be a gentleman sport, and you're meant to yeah. really like you know like the fact that he the, the batter wasn't trying to get any advantage. Um, it was, I I think, and there's been instances where teams have called this sort of thing the appeal back and sort of said, look. He wasn't trying to get an advantage, you know. It's we'll Australia take, appealed we'll to this, though, right? Australia appealed, and none mm-hmm. of their senior players took it back. So that that caused so many problems. The Australian players went. So this was at Lords, the home of cricket. Yeah. Um, and at Lords, the the members stand where they the players have to go past to go to the dressing room. They're, they're like right there, right? Like you can see them. Yeah. Like literally a meter away from you. Um, those members were giving it to the Australian team, yeah, calling yeah. them cheaters, all the names under the sun. And one or two of the Australian players, it was when Kawaja actually, yeah. yeah our, our boy. boy our boy. He, uh, Just can't get away from the news. He reacted to it. And he was like, he was like he's talking back to him and yeah. stuff. And like, yeah, there was, and this has basically become an international incident. The prime minister's involved in this as well. Which prime, prime minister? Oh, Rishi Sunak, our boy uh, over there. Too. Uh, <laughs> and Albert, friend man. of the podcast. <laughs> Ret- return my tweets. You this know. has become an international incident. And they're like talking about, oh, mate, you really should have, uh, you know, you really should have caught back the appeal. And then like uh, Albo's going, oh, oh no, nah, you should learn to play cricket. <laughs> but at the end of the day, like my opinion mm. is that it was against the spirit of cricket. Right, I, I felt like they should have brought back the appeal. I don't think he was trying to. It didn't look like he was trying to get any advantage. But hold up, the ref agreed to it, though, right? The ump, yeah, the ump said it was out, but like technically it's out within the laws of cricket, yeah. right? But because of the fact that he and there was like similar incidents before, where right? it's been. The Did Australia been, win the, that game off the back of that? Was that like a pivotal? Yeah, it was pivotal. So, and and then like the problem is Australia has a history of this, right? In a, what sense? A history history of, what? of like a lot of very controversial playing to the rules. No, not playing to the rules. They've got like a lot of <laughs> against history. the spirit of playing well, to the rules. Recently, the sandpaper stuff, the sand, like yeah, when they use yeah. sandpaper, was, to, uh, yeah. They thought it was totally paper. Cheat, that, that that was cheating, right? And that yeah, yeah, yeah. they have a history of that. They have a history of cheating, which they were, it's an image they were trying to get rid Away of. From, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, and this hasn't helped. 
Like they're bored. It would be pissed off because like they've been trying it since that yeah. incident, that sandpaper incident in 2018 or 19. Mm. Um, they've been trying real hard to change the image of Australian cricket. Mm. Um, this has just brought back a lot of that. <laughs> those, uh, sort good, of, good you know, memories, a man. lot of people are angry about this, a lot. Um, and there's some people that think, like, you know, just get over it and just move yeah. on. Like, you know, it's been, it's something that happened in a game. But, like, it's, yeah, it's carried on into this test match. There's a lot of feeling now mm. amongst the players. They're really, like... As even the, the English players, yeah, right? Yeah, the English players. Yeah. And they're, like, they're really pissed and, like... The coach of the England team's like, yeah, it doesn't feel like we're going to get a B with the Aussie team after this. Um, not for a while, at least. Um, so there is, like, the, the good thing is it makes for entertaining of course, yeah. sport in that. Isn't that what it's all about? Yeah. Um, and But it does sort of bring into account, like, right, Australia's have a, had a history of this. And, and to be honest, man, like, like I'm a massive cricket fan. I've, you know, been born in Australia. Mm. But never gra- gravitated towards the Australian team because of the way they play. I've never really found any of their players to be great people that I would follow. That's why I gravitate towards the Indian team. People like Tinduka, Dravid, Laxon. Mm. Those are the people that I gravitate towards. And look, I mean, that's another separate conversation in itself. But like, mm. whether the image of Australia, I don't know what's going to, there's not going to help. Yeah. This is, this is pretty bad for him. Look, I think historically, you're right. W- with all that sort of stuff, it hasn't played in there, but. Let me take it back to a sport that I watch, like the UFC, right? Yeah. So they have a um. So the thing is, when when is when things are technically that. Yeah. I mean, to me, the spirit of the game is winning. <laughs> like, uh, like that's yeah, how I see it. In yeah. in the UFC, they have a uh, rule which is protect yourself at all times. Yeah, yeah. So for example, it's happened usually when two fighters fight, they tap yeah. usually. So it's happened sometimes not a lot and like it's it's more the exception than the rule that instead of tapping people have used that as an and and in that regard people are saying what the fuck that's against the spirit but again it's been stated that technically there's nothing there's nothing indicating that you need to do that yeah i guess a lot of the discourse was about like do the Aussies really want to win a match like, like this? that? Yeah, like yeah. that? Is it, do they feel good about winning a match like that? If they do, that's fine. Whatever. That's yeah. But I don't know. I just feel like with all the you know controversy of it, the sandpaper gate. Yep. Sandpaper gate. Yeah, well, that's what it was called, man. <laughs> yeah, sure. I don't know whether they would uh, want to win a match. Okay, like why that. is it that when there's anything like a controversy, we add the word gate to it? Why yeah, is it? It's just, it's a, it's what about part of gate, the, P gate? It's a drama, man. <laughs> well, what, 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 when did gate mean drama? Yeah, I don't know. It's, it's random, eh? I might want to check that up, actually. <laughs> English language, man. It makes yeah, no yeah. sense sometimes. Yeah. All right, all right. That's from one drama, from one sport to, a, to another. I'm going to tell you a name, and you should know this name because he is going to be the next, or he's touted as the next big thing in the NBA. His name is Victor Wembenyama. Tell me you've heard the name. You've heard it now, all right? I've heard it now. You've heard it now. Wemby, nickname uh, affectionately Wemby. Number one draft pick, Wemby. Wembenyama Wemby, right? (laughs) For French. 7-3, like a... Falafel? (laughs) Falafel. He's a colossal, right? He's a monster. Like, he, he looks like a... These dimensions are just not human-like, right? Yeah. So anyway, the big deal is he's a number one draft pick. There have been number one draft picks there. But this guy has been so hyped coming out of France that they they have called him the best prospect in the basketball since LeBron James. That's oh, how big. That's a big so, call. Before he's even stepped on the US thing, right? Yeah. So what made him um, gather this tag? Well, one is his dimensions are absurd. 7-3. Which there have been people like almost that, but not actually yeah, like that, yeah, like Yao Ming, for yeah, example. Yeah, 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 yeah. But he can shoot the ball, he can block the ball, he can do almost everything, like yeah. everything at that height. So I think he's about, a superstar. So that's what they've said, right? Also, the other thing is he came to America and he played against the G League, which is like one level yeah. down, and he dominated 36 points, 11 yeah, rebounds. Yeah, yeah. He looked like a superstar. In the, the French League that he got, that he was in, he dominated as their star player, and they built an entire team around him. He, oh, really? He's, like, there's been documentaries here. Anyway, Q in, gets the draft. Summer League is the first taste of NBA-like thing, right? Yeah. So There's like a preseason. Preseason, yeah. if you want to think about it. But it's not. It's, it's before the preseason. Yeah. All the rookies play Summer League, and, pe- and people that... Uh, 
I'm trying to make it into the team, right? But it's it's your first step into NBA quality basketball. For yeah. example, all the other draft picks yeah. would play. So the anticipation and the hype is ready for Victor Wembanyama. Usually, so this is in Las Vegas. Usually, it's empty. Like it's it, it is buzzing, but all sold out as if it was an NBA final. Celebrities really? are there. Britney Spears actually got into an altercation prior to with, with her thing. Like what, what I mean is, this guy's already a big deal, yeah, right? Yeah. Because he's been hyped. Is it over him or? <laughs> she apparently went to tap his back. Yeah. Not apparently, it's a real thing. And her tap so- his back. Yeah, I want a photo with him. Hey, Vic, yeah. Vic and her, his security guard pushed her. Oh. So that was pri- so he's already getting into Britney. he's already getting into shit. That's how p- popular. Yeah. And, and I emphasize he's eighteen years old. Oh. So just imagine you're eighteen years old. Yeah. People are saying you're the next iteration of LeBron James. Everyone, Victor, Victor, everyone's come in. This is just not normal, even for yeah. number one picks. And he lays an egg. He struggled. He really? struggled in this match. Look, it's he got the pressure. It's, it's the pressure. He, he struggled in this match, and yeah. people were absolutely dumbfounded, right? Uh, and the thing, I ironically, is not a lot of first round picks. Um, it's the first ever game. So so he struggled with the physicality, with the speed. He looked a bit clumsy. Um, he was good on the defensive end, but offensively, he looked very lost. He looked awkward, a bit clumsy. He's 7'3", man. 7'3", guy running is going to look weird. Yeah. They interviewed him after, and he was like, honestly, I didn't know what I was doing out there. He he He's had a whirlwind since being drafted. Hasn't really practiced with the team. But in all... but That's what it is. Then. It is, but... I think all number one picks are going to be faced with that level of scrutiny. But if you get tagged as bigger than, better than LeBron James as a thing, it's so he's huge. He's a kid as well. Exactly. Like exactly. Old. What the hell? So all you need to do is go to all the the videos, all the comments, and people are ready, ready to tear him down that's, as an eighteen-year-old. I've fun. seen all I need to see. He's a bust. Really? It's it. Well, after one game. It's in, <laughs> but you say social media is poisonous. Yeah, it really poisonous. is poisonous. It's and poisonous. to be honest, like upon seeing that, I mean, he's he's got. I mean, our num- number five draft pick for Detroit he had a pretty average game in in my view as well. And our number five last year, who's had one year of experience, I think. I think the other thing is just the fact eighteen years old. I can't even remember what the fuck I was doing at eighteen years old. But I can tell you what I wasn't doing: <laughs> playing, <laughs> playing, playing in front of seventeen thousand people, like celebrities, already getting into altercations. With, not him specifically, but all that pressure there. And can you imagine? All he said was, "I, w- I didn't know what I was doing out there." And you just got to cop it because people have so much. Just see, even if you're good, can you imagine like the expectation on it? Like, yeah, because look, at the, end of, at the end of the day, right? There's what five people in a, in a yeah. basketball side, right? On the court, yep. It's very hard to get in that team, man. You, oh you've yeah, got to, it's an elite club. You've got to really be the best of your, you know, the best of your ability. You've, you've got to be one of the best, really, yeah. to be in there. Yep. Hey, at eighteen, that's yeah. that is like all the hype and like that's got to really. I think it's just the hype, right? That's really got to play a part on your mental. So the mental at side 18. of things. eighteen. The mental side of things in sport is it's very huge. important. It's huge. It's right? almost everything. It is almost everything, right? You're right. Um and yeah, I was just shocked about the age. Like eighteen, <laughs> usually like you know you, you get like you know people around their mid twenties. I mean, you're not going to say no to twelve to whatever his contract. Maybe is. you should have actually <laughs> not to develop. Like seriously. Well, he did that in in France. So the the thing the the challenge that Victor is going to come up with is big men his height generally have just not lasted in the NBA. Yeah. Just the wear and the dimensions of him are generally unique. Yao Ming was a monster too, but he didn't last because How long did he play Yao Ming? I think six, that. seven years. Yeah. And he could have done double that, but yeah. his joints weren't like guys that, yeah, that guys that tall. And tall. when you see Victor run, I mean the thing is, he's got such a body of work that you can have one bad that's the other thing. You can have one bad yeah. heck you can have seven bad games. You could have a season of getting bad. That's not good, but I think this preseason was really. It doesn't, but like again, we're in the world where anyone with a microphone <laughs> can talk and have a yeah. thing. And again, I'm thirty something, and when people say, "Who the fuck is this guy?" <laughs> <laughs> Who the fuck is that? 
I mean, I ain't gonna lie. I got butt hurt. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, I'm just trying. Who the fuck is that? <laughs> it's a Tom Cruise looking. Like, what's wrong with you guys, yeah, man? Yeah, yeah. I think we need another round. Connor, respectfully. <laughs> you're okay, man. You're not doing too bad. You're not doing too bad. Connor, uh, uh, I've got something to say to you. I think you're great. You know what? <laughs> Victor, I'm gonna. Nah, so I'm not going down there. All, all of French is gonna. France is gonna be against me. We wish you. We wish you luck. Wish you the best, you've, man. You've if got, it's 18, man. Come on, give give, give the kid a mate, break. I'm bro. sorry, you've got too much of like. That's too much upside. There. You're give, not gonna give, be a bust. Give yeah. the kid a break, just, mate. Just, just collect your checks, bro. Don't worry. Yeah, about yeah, yeah. It. And just could you be nice to Britney? Like, what's wrong with you? Just Poor tame, Britney, man. Just tame down your car. Your Guards, you know what? The, the, the security guards with from like, celebrities, they just the power gets they're, to their they're head. A bit, they're a bit just over way the top. too much. A bit, I think they have to be though. It's like, true because there's a lot of fans it's coming true. up and like. Ah. Apparently, so but, he was in Vegas because it's the Vegas Summer League. Yeah. Uh, his security guard had told him that Britney was there. Yeah. And to stay away because they knew that if, <laughs> because because they knew if Britney comes, Victor's there. There's just gonna be so many yeah, people. Other there. people come so it's and, more yeah. more like our advice is don't engaged to it so he was walking away right yeah. again 18 years old that's it before his first game he has an altercation can you like you know what i mean like how can you even but he's he wait he's 18 who he probably doesn't know who the fuck britney Spears is he knows who britney no Spears he's 18 is, years mate. old man he does he was like a toddler when yeah. oops i did it again came out ba- baby thinking of you keeps me up all night all right move on we're done all right Vic. Uh, actually, Vic. Wait, you talk about vegas did you see that sphere thing that went up no well, what's the thing there's like this massive led sphere in vegas and I thought it was like fake. What's I thought dr- it was what like is it, a drone show. Like, what do you mean? Elegant? No, no. So in Vegas, like they've constructed like a massive sphere that's like two hundred feet tall. What is it supposed to be? Like an like LED screen. And then it's like there's like sometimes they do ads on there. Sometimes it's like a picture of the globe. Sometimes it's a basketball. It's like insane. Like it's. You gotta check this shit out. Everybody's like, "What is this? Is this like some alien shit or something?" <laughs> like, this some alien shit. And there's like alien stuff, you know, in the backyard of in Vegas. So like it was just really odd. Um, but I just wanted to say that. Also. No, it's good. It's good. <laughs> Speaking of alien shit, Tom Cruise Mission Impossible. They had to get AI. We had to get AI back into this show. Right, you, just when you thought you escaped from AI, AI comes into that movie theater and smacks you in the middle of the. <laughs> I mean, Tom Cruise. What a movie! Like, starting to look at that. Nah, he looks all right. Dude, looks that, all right. that was an in, that was a very good movie. It's pretty good. I yeah. liked it. I, I mean, like it. Mission Impossible, just like. Really good action movies. And I think what's happened with that franchise is that it feel it feels like the the later movies are the better ones. Yeah. yeah. Usually it's like oh yeah, people think of franchises like oh, I remember the old ones. Oh great, the later ones. I think after four or five, it, it was just insane. Yeah. Like the the pace at which production. And plus, it's also there's an art to doing good action movie. Like you have to, you can't just do all out action. Yes. Sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Like, John Wick was is great, right? But like, you it can't watch John like Wick a every lot. Time. Yeah. <laughs> this was like don like nonstop, which is good for some people. But like, yeah. you need to have that pacing, and you need yeah, to have pacing, yeah. the, like you know the slow, the fast. Like it all comes together. Mm. Um, and yeah, Tom Cruise is at this point like he's he's got it down to a T. Um, and how old is Tom Cruise? He's got to be in his late fifties, probably sixty. Like, but um, he, he might be an AI himself. Man. <laughs> this one, right? But yeah, the the movie is is good, I and mean, obviously, I mean, we won't, we won't spoil it too much. But it has like AI in it, yeah. Um, and there's a lot of there's a, that crazy stunt he did off the cliff, yeah. which is there. Yep. Um, but no, it's it's a very good movie. What else do you think? Yeah, I mean, what if without spo- we can't really talk about it yeah. without spoiling it, so we'll keep it there. But I think it's just interesting because Tom Cruise. I mean, like uh. We, we, we're in the age of getting nostalgia back, right? We had Top Gun last year, which did surprisingly well. Dude, Top Gun was one of the big box Surpri- office And, and I, I would watch Top Gun again. Like, it's, like as soon well, that, as it comes out. the thing with Top Gun. It shocked Hollywood because it was a movie that didn't open like crazy big. Yeah, yeah. It was like maybe 80 million or 100 million, yeah. like, you know, weekend. Yeah. But it just had legs. And, like, I remember, like, watching it. It must have been in its eighth week yeah in you know in and it, there was still decent and there was, amount, was yeah? still packed you know what i, I think, was like what is going on you like, know what i think it is because so, so, so for something like top gun it probably was word of mouth as well yes no i think that's Old exactly school word of mouth, i think that's exactly so. it because like firstly if if you're into top gun and there's so many people that never you know you yeah, they yeah. were so into it back yeah. in the day like so much pop culture tied to tom cruise and top yeah, gun yeah. and that like aesthetic that 
people just didn't want to be ruined because so many of these remakes or whatever, like re re reboots, that's yeah, what yeah. it was, have been terrible, right? And yeah. then when they heard it was half decent, yeah. then they started going in droves and it was half decent. I mean, like, we can talk about, I mean, the general state of Hollywood blockbusters and their box office because, I mean, what I've been seeing, and I'm, I mean, like, I'm not going to full on do like a full on prediction, but mm. I just think maybe the, the, the superhero movies probably go in the way of the Western. What do you on mean? its way out yeah yeah so back in the day and then i think it was the 60s and 70s westerns were basically the amount of westerns in hollywood mm. were how much superhero movies there are now right yep saturated and people were sick of them yep um and they were looking for something new um and i'm not sure we're at there yet but i believe we're starting to see the early sort of signs like with dwindling sort of box offices from you know Movies like The Flash, like, you know, mm. even Ant-Man, like, all, like, I would say a lot of the MCU movies have been disappointments yep. over the last year or two, right, yep. box office-wise. Um, and you are seeing that with DC, massive losses mm. um, with their movies, and they're going through a reset, so <laughs> good luck to them. But um, it's just, yeah, what are we seeing in Hollywood? It's not just, I think, like... Yeah, how Hollywood's been relying on a lot of old franchises to sort of get them through it. Yeah, Indiana Jones, the latest one, like didn't do good. It's didn't do. It's not doing that great as well. Mm. It has like a two hundred ninety million dollar budget, and like it's done a pretty paltry weekend numbers. I think it's just. I think people are starting to sort of, and I think you've said this before ages ago in a couple of podcasts ago that, mate, you got to get back to the story. Yeah. Like a good story, uh, stop relying on you know old tropes like nostalgia and stuff. Yep. Like. I think maybe people are, uh, are yearning for something original. Maybe I have, I have a feeling. Do you think? Uh, I mean, stuff like Top Gun, you're right, did work. Yeah, but I mean, there's only so long you can sort of ride nostalgia for it. And I think, yeah, maybe the, we're starting we're starting to see the start of it where, man, you got to get some new original movies out, otherwise people aren't turning up. Of course. Um, and, yep. like, we're in an economy, right, where, like, people are not just going to spend money to go watch movies. Like no, they I don't did think before, so. Right? Every, everyone's, like, conserving their money and saving it for, like, you know, the really good movies that they yep. want to watch, like the Top Guns. <laughs> yeah. But Look, um, there's so much yeah. content for free out there, man. Yeah, that's that's. I mean, the you, go, you go yeah. to YouTube, yeah, the yeah. production and, like, I mean, like, I wouldn't want to say no to Netflix and stuff like that, but... There's a lot of good free content out there. You're 100%. fighting uh, like with a lot of like original, you know, ideas. And also, what do we want to watch? Like, how how long is our um, our attention span? Right. Like, well, here's the thing, right? Like, uh, I think I saw Andrew Schultz talk about talk about this. Like, he thought YouTube is the biggest competitor to Netflix. Yeah, I think so too. Because Netflix is pouring billions and billions into you know, buying and developing content. How much is mm. YouTube spending? Zero. zero. Yeah. They're spending zero on that content. Yeah. Because people are making it for them. Yeah. So, and like, at the end of the day, like, you know, whether you're watching a YouTube video or, you you know, or what, you're not watching the Netflix movie. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Or the yeah, Netflix yeah. TV show, you're just watching. A, so, it's about the, the, you know, the attention span. You're getting that, getting a hold of that. There's so many places where that can go right now. Mm. But like, Mate, YouTube is not spending anything. They're they're an ads company, basically, YouTube. Yeah, I think fundamentally it's interesting, right? So you have like long form and short form and TV and movies have been about two distinct ways of uh, presenting a story, right? Yeah. yeah. So in TVs, we know that you can build characters over time and movies is a condensation of of that. But usually you associate movies with your, you know, your blockbusters and your, your Pam Bow Wow. And I think... Again, now we're at a time where, you know, content creators have so much power that they haven't had before and people are gravitating towards the little communities that they sort of build, right? Yeah. And um and are following them through. And maybe not quite the best example, but like, you know, <laughs> Kevin Hart's movies now are not like the most amazing things that you've ever seen. But you've gone through the journey with him as an individual through his stand up comedy yeah. time. And I think that's what content creators are kind of doing now and they're the new indiv- like you know what i mean you go yeah. through adolescence or maybe if you're a kid and you you, you grow up with this content creator and now they're an adult and like you you still like the way that they think and that like and i think that to me that's the next extension when it comes to movies and stuff like that because to a degree the reason we keep rehashing things is one 
we've got the same writers writing. That's th- that's one element of it. Uh, I, I think also, I think it's actually something different. Okay. I actually think it's the studios, yeah, not willing to bank on something new. Yeah, like when you think of business, right? Yeah, you think, oh, that's worked before. Yeah, let's get it back. It's, you know, it's going to work again. Yep. I think that mindset has killed a lot of originality in Hollywood, mm. um, and it's really just, I mean, sort of created this environment where, like, you know, well, we want to make thousand of these movies, and, mm. and and like it's it's also having an effect on the VFX industry. Like, if you look at all the CGI lately, mm. I was watching I was watching Infinity War the other day, and I was like, man, look at Thanos, looks insane. Mm. I was like, what's what's happened in the last couple of years with VFX, yeah. and that industry has been pushed to the brink. Yeah, of like you know. A lot of these production houses are getting strained by the amount of work, the crunch to get it done on time. When you say strained, is it time or they have to do it with less budget? Time, less budget as well. Because what yeah. happens is, um, this is like some backstage movie talk, is that is that movie studios, they go out to these production houses, mm-hmm. the CGI production houses, and yeah. say, these are the amount of scenes that we need done. And then, um, you know, this is the money we're going to give you. And... Like it's sort of like a tender process, right? Yeah. And, yeah. and then like, oh, this company is doing this much. A lot of them try to undercut each other, but then what happens is they undercut each other, mm. and then the movie studio during the process is like, oh no, we want to add all this other shit as well now. Yeah. And that's not that wasn't previously in that brief. Mm. So all that ad has sort of backlogged a lot of these projects. Um, that's why I see a lot of them get delayed as well. Yeah. Because that the industry is. The VFX industry is on the brink of, brink, brink of collapse, I believe. Mm. Um, it, a lot of the CGI looks terrible. You see Ant-Man, you see The Flash, you see... A lot of these movies... Like, the CGI has been looking t- more terrible than things that, like, in the mid-2010s. So I'm just, yeah. a bit, like, flabbergasted as what's going on. Yeah. Um, and it's definitely that. I, like, the, the crunch, the not getting paid enough. Um, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if those people, if they're part of a union, go on strike. Yeah, yeah. Because... They're just not being treated well, and the studios don't care. They're mm. just like, oh, we want to, you know, this is how we want to do it. Like, you know, we're going to pay you nothing, and you have to do this in this amount of time. Mm. Um, and, yeah, I mean, like, it is having an effect. And, like, a lot of this is also, we talked about the writer strike as well. Like, they're yep. sick of working like this on the studio. So, it's a lot of the the, the mindset of the studios. Mm. Yeah, they, they've got to allow some originality, you know. Again. In your view, is... um. Our movie's dead. Is is the movie business a dying business? I don't believe the movie business is a dying business. I mean, like, if it's not dying; it's growing. Do you think it's growing? It's a just stagnation business. I think the last year it's definitely declined. Yeah, um, Hollywood as a whole. Mm. Um, there's been very little big, massive blockbuster. And the one we saw was the Mario Brothers movie, um, mm. which was That's the big blockbuster. It, yeah, but like, you got a lot of nostalgia there too, right? Mm. But um. I just feel like we're very close to a point where originality will be 100% needed to go through like this sort of phase in Hollywood. Yeah. Um, like we talked about the Western. I mean, at the end of the day, like the Westerns were died out because of the fact that they were the same thing over and over again. Um, if superhero movies, if general franchises keep doing the way they're gone... Mm. Mate, like, it's not going to be good for Hollywood. Yep. Um, I, th- I think I even heard the other day, Disney has lost nine hundred million over the past year. So when they lose it, because because a, a movie is essentially it's a, it's a business, it's a, it's proper, a business, profit yeah, making yeah. it. Never. How can you? How can studios c- like continue to make such losses and go through it? Because you go in not knowing if you're going to make a profit or not. Is it like? Is it effectively like? Venture capitalism, where you know that maybe only one in ten make decent money, and it's that one in ten that keeps you going. Like, how does how does the business? Well, work? at the end of the day, they're going to have to answer to someone above them, right? Yeah, yeah. So in this case, say for example, something like a DC has to answer to Warner Brothers, yeah. Discovery, yeah. Um, da- David Zaslav, so is the head of that. Mm. Um, but even then, I've, <laughs> I heard they want to sell. Mm. So they're probably going to have to answer to someone above them, <laughs> um, yeah. but uh, it's just yeah. What like at the end of the day, there's, there are these big sort of you know venture capitalist firms that fund a lot of these things. Mm. Um, 
And if they're seeing more losses in the superhero industry, yeah, I could see definitely Super see them go. Are out I could of definitely business. see them go. Mate, I don't think superhero movies are the way anymore. Because there are two two ways to make money on a movie, right? One is you exceed. Obviously, the equation is you, you exceed like the cost, right? Like you yeah. sell out more. Yeah. But the other thing is like reducing the cost with with a genuine like like movie. What was that movie with Adam Fraser? Was it Whale? Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Brendan yeah. Fraser. Brendan yeah. <laughs> Adam Fraser. Yeah. That that wasn't a no, it was effects just, it was movie. It was a proper feel, story, right? Well, the prosthetics would would have been expensive, but like the, it's literally just shot in one area, one mm. sort of area, you know, you, um, yeah. one set. And this is where horror movies have been very good because mm. they they've been known to be like on a very small budget but mm. make a lot of money. Yeah. Um, and they've been the darlings of Hollywood for a long time because of that, like of studios as well, mm. where you, know, they don't have, you, don't have, you could probably only spend like maybe 20 or 30 million and you get like a very good blockbuster, even less than that. It was paranormal activity. Mm. I think it costs $100,000 to make. <laughs> There's yeah, nothing. Right. Yeah. Um, and you can get like a l- big box office returns from that type of stuff. So, I mean, it might be that they're not going to stop giving superhero movies these $250 million dollar bloated budgets mm. and sort of say okay here's 80 million dollars and try work something with this mm. that's where the originality is going to come in right mm. um but yeah. i think it, originality and storytelling is also needed man like this mm. how are we going to get to the point where like the youth of today create something mm. that they feel nostalgic about right yeah we're if all we're, riding on, the, we're yeah. all riding on nostalgia from the 80s yeah like 80s and 90s, like we're writing on that. Yeah. But what, when are the, like, that's what I'm thinking. What's the youth going to create now, the generation going to create now that they're going to sort of think about in 20, 30 years? Yeah. It won't be shit that we've sort of feel nostalgic about. Mm. So, like, that sort of brings a big sort of conversation into it. But, mm. which, is, which is why I think, like, YouTube is where you're going to find that. I, it I, probably I is. generally do yeah. think that that's at least. The next stars, or, or it's well, a look fact. At, look, you're at, look at Logan that. Paul. Yeah, Logan Paul was a YouTuber, right? Started yeah. out. Yeah, and then his his fans were that were like you know, 10, 15 years yeah, old. Yeah, they follow you. They followed him through the years. They saw him. They followed him to boxing. They yeah. followed him now to wrestling. Mm. Like that's probably what we see, right? You're right in the future that it's maybe movies and storytelling isn't something that. Is shown on a big theater in two hours. Maybe mm. it's maybe it's a, a life story of someone, right? Yeah. Like a or, Logan or, or, Paul, or maybe it is still in. I mean, there is a nostalgia about going to a theater, which will the, the the cinematic experience. Don't get me wrong, I love the cinematic experience, and yeah. I, nothing will ever stop that for me. Yeah, but I mean, it's been a dredge going to the movies last year. Yeah, like I gotta say, yeah, I haven't seen anything outstanding. Mm. Um, and yeah, I'm really waiting for something to wow me, like, like a back to the future wowed me back then, mm, you know, yeah. something like that, something wonderful and magical and really just like, you know, that the, the production behind this is really good and the idea is unique and new. Yeah. Maybe we've run out of ideas. Mm. Maybe that's, that's where we're at, but I still think we can think of something new. Yeah. It's got to require a different level of thinking, um, and I don't know. I just I don't know whether the studios are ready for that yep. at the moment. There will be once there's less money coming in, and which it is in this past year. Yeah, I think everything. Yeah, like all asset classes have readjusted. Yeah. In terms of like the costs and stuff yeah. like that, so why can't it happen to movies? Yeah. And why can't we still keep a same output or or use that as a catalyst to grow? Yeah. But time will tell. Yeah. Time will tell. And uh, speaking of time, I think we're done. We are done, guys. Um, leave some comments below. Let us know what you thought of the podcast. We'll I got a rant for you. Australian cricket. It one. Yeah. You just keep doing what you got to do. Anyway, till next time, guys. Yeah. Ciao.